Alice the Car Doctor. Welcome back to my channel. If you're new, welcome. If you've already been with me since day one, hey, I love you. Appreciate all the support. Welcome. This is one of the things that I'm getting ready to start doing. Um, I'm getting ready to start a kind of a new series. It's top five failure points of vehicles that I normally see in my shop. Um, it is a rainy day in Georgia, so hopefully that don't put you to sleep. That's why the car is wet, obviously. <laughs> but anywho, um, I'm getting tired of seeing my customers get, getting themselves into cars that they don't, that they don't, ah, messing up my words like always, excuse me. Um, <laughs> getting themselves into cars they don't really know about. People normally pick cars on the looks and not really worried about the drivetrain. Um, they just see it. Ooh, this is cute. Um, let me buy it. And they start driving and they start noticing all these issues because they don't know what it takes to maintain these cars. So this is kind of help with that, you know, share a couple of tips and tricks along the way on how to take care of this particular car. So let's jump right into it. Today's video, I'll be covering the top five common issues with the first generation GMC Arcadia models 07 through 2016. Now, these are not in any, any kind of particular order. It's just random, not random, but things that I see come in the shop, uh, failure points with these particular vehicles. Speaking of failure points, number one, I want to discuss the timing chain. Um, the timing chains normally fail. You can't see it because it is so tucked in there. Um, they normally, I see them normally fail at around 150K. Um, and I think the major reason they're failing because people are not using good quality oil. With these engines, any, any modern day engine, you want to use good, I like full synthetic. Um, you know, write down in the comment, tell me get what you guys using and what you've had success with. But dealing with modern day engines, I either use a synthetic blend or full synthetic. Um, and you have to change the oil on the regular. That will keep this timing chain alive. Change it every 3,000 miles, even though when using synthetic, you can go longer. But you don't want to have to change out the timing chain on this particular car because what it takes to do what it takes to do it is about 15 hours of labor. That equates to almost two grand, uh, well, a little over two grand dealing with parts and labor. So we want to try to avoid that at all costs, <laughs> and a lot of people end up doing it because they don't know what they got this self into. Number two, this is a big one for me, um, coolant tees. Okay, back here you have some heater core lines. I don't know if you can see them. I really don't want to touch them because they're still plastic, but you'll see some, um, oh, I can point to it with this. Damn. All right. All right, there's the hose clamps right there. Yeah, okay, there's the hose clamps. But they got these hoses, these heater hoses. And they have little plastic tees on them. And what I see often, what I see often is they will crack and get brittle over time and break. That can leave you stranded on the side of the road. And for you people who don't know, when your car is running hot, just pull over. Do not try to make it to the next exit. Do not try to make it home. Save yourself some money and just pull over uh, now what i recommend for fixing that particular problem for preventive maintenance they sell um dorman have this great product well it's not a it is a product they have a upgraded cooling hose um they come with instead of plastic tees they're aluminum um i will put that down in the description below where you can pick those up off amazon but i highly recommend the aluminum ones they just much better. <laughs> I got them on my personal, on my personal vehicle. Um, do we have time? Well, it's raining. I don't want to put my wife out in the rain. Please don't. <laughs> <laughs> but I recommend upgrading those. That way, when you're out on the road or family vacation, hours out, you won't have those rupture on you. I see those cracking and breaking a lot. Um, so that's a good upgrade. All right, number three. But before I mention number three. Notice how tight everything is in this engine. That's why it's so expensive to maintain. 
they kind of pack everything in here and it makes it hard for technicians. They even hide the radiator cap. Take a look at this. In order to put um, zoom out so they can see what I'm peeling up. Uh, in order to top it off with cooling, you have to remove this big plastic piece. But I'm a little bit off topic, but you know, it's these little plastic clips that you pull up and and um, I don't, I'm not gonna go into that. I'm off topic. But <laughs> <laughs> anywho, you gotta remove this plastic piece. But that brings me to my third topic, power steering issues. Now, a lot of your, you may be wondering, where do I even refill the power steering fluid? Well, to refill it, you have to remove the oil cap, like so, get off to the side and remove your engine cover. And bam, there it is. And while I'm thinking about it, let me check it. Uh, let's see. Yeah, we're on the minimum mark. Okay, a little bit off topic again. <laughs> but another normal failure that I see on these are, um, is the high pressure power steering line. They will start leaking from around this cramp area right here that I'm touching. And causing power steering leak, causing heart to turn. Also from the rack and pinion, um, it'll start leaking. Now, I don't have no preventive maintenance tip on that. That's just one of those weird items you have to deal with when it failed. Um, so sorry about that. <laughs> Number four, transmissions. Um, now, <laughs> every doctor have their specialty and transmissions is just not my specialty. Uh, I'm more of an engine guy, engine performance, all that good stuff. Um, speaking of transmissions, if you do want to check out a specialty transmission channel, I recommend Precision Transmission. They're a very good channel. I watch them time to time, learn a couple of things. Um, Back with this transmission though, um, I now I do see um, the, I, a lot of failures in these transmissions and mainly due to people neglecting to change out their fluid. Um, I recommend changing out the fluid every 30,000 miles. People, you have to change out your fluid just like you change out your oil. Um, this one, on modern day vehicles, they normally don't provide a dipstick but the dipstick is right here and basically what you're looking for is like a bright reddish uh, come on focus camera uh, um, sort of like a bright reddish um this one probably need to be changed out it's not bad but it's fair i'll give it fair you want it to be bright red or sort of looking like that if you're buying a vehicle you don't want to see like black black is bad black means burnt so if you are checking out a vehicle just pop a dipstick and look at the fluid uh, all right moving on point number five purge solenoid and it is right here i see these fail across the board on gm vehicles and basically what this part does is it takes gas um gas fumes that will and otherwise be escaping into the atmosphere and this solenoid opens to let um, to let gas vapors inside the engine to be burnt again and what would normally happen is if it gets stuck open it'll be letting on lots of gas fumes and causing a rich mixture and uh, cause the engine to run really funny uh, cause um, of course cause a check engine light uh, calls it evap code but it's a really simple part to change out i can i think i can do that with my eyes closed is speaking of with my eyes closed if you want to see me attempt something with my eyes closed write down in the comment and mm -hmm. let me know <laughs> i think it'll be a cool little challenge but i won't do it if y'all don't say anything so make sure you, you know you're right um now i do want to talk about that was just a quick one um, a little failure point. I do have some bonuses for you guys um, on this engine. I also see valve cover gasket failure. So the valve cover gasket is very tucked off into this engine. You have to go through a lot to get to it. Um, you have to take off the intake manifold. The, and speaking of the intake manifold, the spark plugs and coils 
are covered by the intake manifold. So if you are doing a tune-up or a changing valve cover, uh, matter of fact, if you're doing valve covers, go ahead and do a tune-up while you're in there and change out the coils. The reason I say change out the coils, because once you put this intake manifold back on, you don't want to go back under there because of a coil went out. You want to just go with all new stuff. But anywho, um, the valve covers, they'll start leaking and you'll see normally pools of oil down up in this region area. And what will happen if you neglect to change out the valve cover and it continues to seep oil, the alternator is directly below the um, the valve cover. So it'll drip oil all down in the precious electronics of the alternator. And that'll cause the alternator to fail, costing you more money. So that is a really good preventive maintenance thing. You can just look at and inspect every now and then. And hopefully you have a good mechanic, they'll, they'll tell you. Um, how to prevent that? Well you really can't in my opinion it's just one of those things you have to keep an eye out for now would i recommend this car for my friends and family is it doctor approved and for you consumers out there well let's take a listen see what the car says <laughs> high maintenance i would give that a no <laughs> Alice the Car Doctor out. If you enjoyed my video, like always, please like and subscribe. It really helps me out. Um, you know, write down in the comments if you have any more video suggestions or if another car you would like to see me review, kind of, sort of. Um, write down in the comments. I always like hearing from you guys. Alice the Car Doctor out. See you guys on the next video.